we are going to talk about um, extra credit three, which is also a part of your um, semester project. And if you look at it, or we'll read the first page, I can't remember, I think it's like three slides on the project. I can't remember exactly which number slides, but you can relate it to them. So it says, um, we're gonna do descriptive statistics. So this is taking us back to like, I wanna say a week three and four, where we do measures of center, measures of variation. And that's basically what you're doing here. So let's see, we have, um, you, we know this. You'll be working on the semester project throughout the term in parts as extra credit assignments. Additional information can be found on the semester project information page. You will get feedback from your instructor, um, which is why the extra credit is really good to do because even if you, um, even if you don't get the extra credit, you get feedback for the project because you want your project score to be good. So doing that extra credit, you're kind of setting yourself up so that you're ready for your project when it comes, which is due at the end of week 14. If you do all of your extra credit assignments, um, again, they're not required, but highly suggested, at least by me, if you do all your extra credit assignments, by the time you get to week 14, you really don't have to do anything about your project. It's basically done. You just have to put it together. Um, you know finalize it because all of these extra credits add to that okay so um in extra credit one or in the, you know initially you guys did a systematic sampling method to collect 35 values those 35 values are extremely important they are the samples that you're going to use for your whole project every single extra credit assignment i suggested that you guys stick it in your calculator in stat edit and put it in L5. So I have this sample here um, that I used and I think I already put it in sorting order, which I'm gonna suggest you do if you have not already done so. To do that, um, ascending order. Stat, you want sort A for ascending order. You're going from least to greatest in other words and you have to tell it which list it's in. And I suggested that you guys put your list in, th in L5 just because you don't want to continue to, you know, <laughs> type in 35 values every time you have to use them. So if you stick it in L5, you could still do your process, you know, your, your, um, your assignments, your quizzes, and that's not affecting anything. So, but remember that it is there. So I want to sort ascending from least to greatest L5, enter. So now if it is not already in ascending order for you guys, it will be now. So L5, now I'm in ascending order. And this is gonna help you also find your mode because now you can, oopsies. Now you can like literally see repeated values because they're in order from least to greatest. We'll get there. Okay. So same, five, same 35 values that you used in your systematic sampling from extra credit one, from jump. Put them in your calculator, stat, edit, put them in L5 so they're there, order from least to greatest. That should already be done. If it's not already done, do it. Okay, um, now, I, like, these are literally the instructions of how to do the process. It's, it's all for you, like, it's literally in steps. I'm not going to read those steps because we should know those steps. I'm gonna go straight to what we're, oops, straight to what is required, which is what we want here. Central measures, measures of center. So I'm gonna start there. And I think this is its own um, slide on your project. So you wanna list your measures of center. You wanna list your mean, you wanna list your median, you wanna list your mode, and that's it. Not a big deal. And the mean, and, and I'm gonna suggest that you guys use your proper notation, but it's a sample mean, so X bar. Not a big deal because literally you could find that and actually, I'm going to go ahead and find all this in one shot because you want your central measures, you want your five number summary, and you want your standard deviation, which is also measures of variation. Now, they're not asking you to find all of your measures of variation, but standard deviation. So um, we can literally find all of that in one shot on our calculator. So I'm just going to list them here already. So central measures, mean, median, and mode, um, five number summary. Okay. Um, and hopefully you guys remember that consists of the minimum, the first quartile, 
the second quartile, the third quartile, and the maximum. Then our standard deviation, and I'll write it like this which we know as a sample standard deviation, so it's located or represented as lowercase s. So these are all the statistical values, the descriptive statistics that we're asked to find here, and then we're gonna just talk about them. That's it, that's all it is. Talk about them um, and maybe add a little extra calculation to show understanding of what, you know, what they're telling us based on what we learned before. So let's go ahead and find all these values. So we're gonna go to stat calc, right? One of our stats is where we get all these values. We've used this so many times, it's not even a joke. Um, list, I wanna put L5 here, second, five, to put L5 because that's where I put my list of 35 values that I'm leaving in my calculator. Frequency list, I want that blank. I've talked about this before. If you have something here and you're not supposed to have something there, then you're going to get incorrect values. And it's so very important, especially for your project, to make sure that this is blank. You do not want to have anything in frequency list. And then calculate. Here are all my values. Now, did they ask us to round to a specific um, digit? Let's see, let's see. I'm looking for rounding. And I'm not seeing rounded so for me i'm not going to be crazy about rounding but i really don't want all of these digits um oops so let's find your mean and typically when you're rounding your round off rule for these if it's not given to you is usually one digit to the right of the decimal or one more digit than represented in your situation but i'm going to say i'm going to take 496 0.26. I'm going to take two digits to the right of the decimal for my mean. My mean, um, my, I'm going to just go down here. My sample standard deviation, SX, which is what I need as well, standard deviation is 542.95. That looks kind of large. And then if I scroll down, and by the way, my N is 35, that's a clear indication that I have 35 values. So if that's not 35, something is wrong. I'm gonna scroll down for the rest of my stuff. My five number summary where my minimum is 35. My Q1 is 129. My median, which is also known as Q2. So I'm gonna put that here for the second quartile as Q2. And I'm gonna put that up here as my median. What else? Q3, my third quartile is 587. And then my maximum is 2,514. Okay, wow, that just jumped up. <laughs> There's a large change here. Um, and let's see, anything else? That's all we want. Okay, so we have our um, measures of center. Um, there's one more that I want to find the mode, and that's not a big deal. You could literally look at your list and determine your mode. What is the most repeated value? Some of you like to go to stat and go over to your list and then kind of scroll down to see what's repeated the most. So let's see mine. 54 is repeated twice. Um, 315 is repeated twice. 315. Oh God, I'm gonna have to start writing these. I don't know if, I don't know if these are all gonna be modes or if something's gonna be repeated more than this. But this is literally what you're gonna do. I probably would prefer to look at um, the list and yeah, so 54. So it looks like I have three modes. It looks like I have multimodal data because it looks like um, 54, 315, and 1,346 are all repeated twice, whereas all the other values are only repeated once. And I'm just gonna verify that. 315, yeah, it looks like just those three. I'm just double checking. Yep. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I have multimodal data here. And not everybody's going to have multimodal. You might even not have any mode. It's, you know, you'll see you might have bimodal data, two modes. You might have no mode. If everything is repeated once, you have no mode. It varies, okay? Um, not a big deal. So list your mean, median, and mode. And let's see what they want us to type, right? Provide at least two quality sentences describing which measure is best for your data and why. So which measure is best for your data? Is the mean good? Is the median good? Um, which one would represent your data the most? Like, do you have outliers? Do you think you have outliers? Do they pull the mean 
to the right, I think a lot of you have skewed data. And if you think about it, um, when you talk about skewness, and I would talk about skewness here, um, the mean is greater than the median and greater than the mode. Well, <laughs> but the mean is greater than the median mostly, right? Um, which technically is greater than the mode because there's these two modes that are repeated. Um, so what does that mean? It means my data skewed to the right. So we talked about skewness in the last um, extra credit, and now you can kind of discuss that part here to support what you stated earlier, that you might have data that is skewed to the right. And this is showing that, this is supporting that because your mean is bigger than your median, which is bigger than your mode. Um, and I think most of you do have skewed to the right, which looks like this, right? Bulk of your data is here in the lower values and you might have a few large numbers pulling it to the right, giving it that um, little right tail that's skewed to the right. And um, some of you were confusing that, but if you look at this, actually, sorry, if you look at this, I mean, if you look at your, I think we looked at it with the frequencies. The frequencies were the largest for the lower values, so that implies that the majority of your data set is you know, on the lower end and then some pulling it to the right. This is supporting that because the mean is bigger than the median. Therefore, we're saying that it is skewed to the right. I'm supporting what I said based on looking at my frequency table. This is a project, right? Remember, you want to do that. Are these values close together? Um, why or why not? Again, they're not extremely close together. And this is also going along with skewness. You know, um, when the mean is greater than the median, we can, we can say that this is skewed to the right. And there may be outliers on the high end. This is actually leading up to my next slide, which is going to talk about the five number summary. You know, it's a project, right? I'm going to um, do this on the next page. <clears throat> this is a project. Do you want to talk about it as a project? Do you want to discuss what you're seeing based on the knowledge of what you learned in the course? Um, the five number summary is also going to support the skewness, and we're going to actually talk about outliers because I want to know if I do have outliers. But look at this. Um, find the IQR, which is the interquartile range. I don't know why this says, and the interquartile. They're, they're the same, um, which is actually going to be needed to find outliers. Then using at least two quality sentences, describe what the five number summary and the IQR tell you about your data. Do you have outliers? If so, what are they? Explain why you chose these as outliers. I would do this even if that wasn't explained to me because I'm talking about skewness. If my data is skewed to the right, are there values there that are technically considered outliers, I should say to statistically, mathematically considered outliers, pulling that data to the right? Well, the only way to do that is to actually mathematically calculate that. And to, to start that off, I need to find the IQR, interquartile range, which is literally just Q3 minus Q1. And you wanna show your process. You know, you're talking about this and you're showing it mathematically, 587, minus 129, right? I would say I'm going to determine if I have outliers pulling this data to the right, creating that skewness. And you can actually support that with a box plot if you want to as well, for me at least. Because I enjoy um, <laughs> supporting data with a, or supporting um, statements with data. So my IQR is 458. You could do this two ways. Um, you could find 1.5 times your IQR now which is part of your process to calculate your outliers, which is literally what I just determined, my IQR 458 multiplied by 1.5, 687. And if you recall, to calculate, I'm going to write calculating outliers, what you're going to do is take, and you can actually literally write this out, the minimum value, not an outlier, can be found by doing Q1, and we did this, minus 1.5 IQR. I'm showing understanding of the information. I'm showing, you know, that I can analyze the situation. Let's see, 129 minus, I already calculated this. I already calculated it, 687. I don't have to do the 1.5 again. I did it before. So this is where you can either do it ahead of time or you could do it now if you want to negative 558, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead and say maximum value that is not an outlier, okay? And to do this, I'm gonna do Q3 plus 
the 1.5 times the IQR interquartile range. Um, and Q3 was 587, and I'm going to add 1.5 times IQR, which I already determined was 687. I'm not going to do that again. And it looks like I probably will have um, outliers. Let's see, 587 plus 687 is 1274. Yep. So what this means, so then you're going to talk about this in words, and I'm not going to write the words because you have to come up with the words yourself. You're going to say, you know, <clears throat> I'm going to determine if I have count, uh, outliers, and I want to determine that because it looks like I might potentially have some on the high end, or, you know, or larger outliers pulling this data to the right, affecting my mean, right, making my mean a little bit higher. Um, and let's see if I actually do, if these values are considered outliers or not. And those are my calculations. To calculate outliers, this is what I do. Um, anything less than, and you could write this out, anything less than negative 558 is considered an outlier. I go to my list and I look at it and obviously nothing is less than negative 558. And I didn't expect outliers on the low end because it looks like my data is skewed to the right. I would expect them on the higher end if I have them. But look at this. I mean, I knew I had outliers because the maximum value is 2,514. My maximum value for my data set. And anything bigger, and you can say this, anything greater than 1,274 is considered an outlier. And if you look at this, check this out. I have a lot of outliers. I have 1,346. I have 1,662 and I have 2514. I actually have four outliers, which is again supporting what I said from jump, from the frequency table, that my data is skewed to the right. From, from here, my, my measures of center um, slide that I'm skewed to the right based on the mean and comparing it to the median. And this is supporting that because now I'm showing I have outliers. If I wanna take it even further, which I don't mind you guys to do for me, because I like, again, like I said, extra support. It looks like I have, uh, hold on, <laughs> let me see something because I have a number here that is looking weird. What was it? 1662. I don't know why I have, look at this. I have extra two here. <laughs> 1662. Okay. Otherwise I'm changing my whole situation. 1662. I probably was thinking about that too. So I have four outliers, right? <clears throat> if I want to support that even more, I'm going to go and show a box plot. Check this out. I'm going to go to my stat plot. If you guys don't remember how to do this, second stat plot up here. I'm going to go to number one. And actually, I'm going to show two box plots. One of them that we're used, the regular box plot here. And make sure that your X list has the list. For me, it's L5. My frequency is one, make sure that that's one. If I go to my graph, it doesn't show up. I go to zoom and number nine, zoom stat. And you could see that, look at that. I'm gonna actually screenshot that. I'm gonna put that, you know, or I could put that on my, um, what do you call it? On my slide or actually discuss um, a slide state, you know, on the next slide you may see your, your box plot is basically a graphical representation of your five number summary and you can identify that you have this maximum value pulling it all the way over here you have this right whisker that's so far because remember that um with your five number summary between each of these values is 25 percent 25 percent of the data is between 35 and 129 25 percent of the data is between 129 and 320 25 percent of the data between 587 and 2514 right so all of this is supporting what we said I'm gonna even go further than that and I discussed a modified box plot I don't know if everyone did but this is the modified box plot which is going to show my outliers um, again my X was L5 my frequency is 1 I could leave the marks as whatever if I go to my graph look at that um, just zoom stat again just in case I shouldn't have a problem it shows three outliers only because this one's repeated twice. So it's only showing, obviously, um, can't show the same value twice. But if I trace it, you'll see all these values. See, 1346. Um, and then look, see, I said 
13, 40, 60, how I'm going back and forth and it's not moving, that's implying that there's more than one value here. If I click it again, it's going to the next one now. So I, you see that? Um, I click to the right from here and it was on 1346. I click to the right again, it didn't move. That's because there's more than one value that's there. I click to the right again, 1662. So this is following what I calculated. I can actually show this as well. Why not? I'm supporting what I'm saying, right? I'm supporting my statements. I'm supporting um, what I said from before. Actually, you don't want that little ticker on there, but you get the idea, right? Um, yeah, I don't want that ticker there. <clears throat> but you get the idea, right? You're showing understanding of the information and you're able to analyze it based on what you learned. You're talking about stuff that we discussed in the assignments, right? This is the idea here. So I talked about my measures of center. I talked about my five number summary. There's some information I want to talk about with the standard deviation. Um, let's just pull, I'm going to pull the mean. And I'll show you why in a second. I'm going to pull the mean over here. And I'm going to pull the standard deviation as well. And we're going to do a little more analyzation based on things that we've learned before. See if you guys remember this. Because you're asked specific questions here. List your standard deviation. OK, I listed it. Using at least two quality sentences, describe what the standard deviation tells you about the spread of your data. Remember that the larger the standard deviation and you want to compare it to your data, right? You know, if I have a standard deviation that is huge, or let's say, um, you know, or let's say I have a standard deviation that's like two, that wouldn't make sense with this situation. That would be extremely so small. Um, so you want to compare it with your data, but the smaller the standard deviation, the closer, right? The closer together your values are to the mean and the larger the standard deviation, the further away they are. Um, so you want to analyze that and look at that. The value of your standard deviation, is it large, is it small? Is your data close together or is it spread apart? This question is added this semester. Do you have about 68% of your data within one standard deviation from the mean? Um, I, I feel like that question is a little confusing, but let me show you what it means. And a lot of times we, you know, we, we talk about that with a normal distribution, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it on a number line and I'm gonna make the center the mean. And the mean for my data that I have here is 496.26. And because they're asking us about one standard deviation from the mean, I'm gonna calculate that. What values one standard deviation away from the mean on the top and what's that, what value is one standard deviation below? And that's literally just taking the mean, which I'm not, 496.26, and I'm gonna actually just do that over here because I can't fit all those numbers. 496.26, and adding the standard deviation to that, 542, or at least my standard deviation. You're doing this for your values, I hope. <laughs> um, this is 1039.29, I'm sorry, 0.21. And then over here, I'm gonna take the mean, which is 496.26 and subtracting 542.95, that's gonna give me a negative value, negative 46.69. And the question is, and you know, you can show this process, you can discuss this, in fact you should, right? You're asked the question, do you have about 68% of your data with, within one standard deviation of the mean? You can talk about how do you calculate these values that lie one standard deviation away from the mean. You're going to subtract and add the standard deviation to your mean to find that. You can either use a number line, you can show the calculations, whatever floats your boat. But now it's a matter of what percentage of your total data set are here, are in between these numbers. So basically between negative 46.69 and 1039.21. So I'm gonna go to my data and I'll just count them. And technically this does it for me, right? So this is one, two. So I'm just gonna go down until I see anything that is greater than 1,039. Let's, let's see, it looks like a lot of them. Ah, here, 
See that? 1,087 is bigger than 1,039. So I'm stopping at 654, which is the 29th data value. So check this out. 29 out of the 35 values lie within one standard deviation of the mean. 29 out of the 35. Wow. 82.86% of my data lie within one standard deviation of the mean. I don't know about your data set, but you're going to do that, do these calculations for your numbers. I would probably imagine something similar because if you are skewed to the right, then you would expect the bulk to be around here because you only have a few values pulling it to the right. And you're talking about this. This is all stuff that you're talking about. You're analyzing your situation. Um, but that's it. That's all you have to do. So finding these values is not a big deal, right? One bar stats. But once you find them, now you have to talk about them. And this is going back to the stuff that you learned before, right? Um, you know, your mean bigger than your median. That's talking about data skewed to the right, just as we saw in the frequency table, right? Are these values close together? Why or why not? You know, now your five number summary you can actually use to verify and support the fact that you are skewed to the right. Why? Because you can now use, you know, your, your calculations to determine if you have outliers or not. And show that process, describe it, explain it. This is why my data is skewed to the right, look. And then support that also by talking about the standard deviation. Is it large, is it small? If it's big, are your values far, far away from your mean? If it's small, are they close to your mean? What, um, what percentage of your data set is within one standard deviation of the mean? Well, how do you calculate that? How do you determine the values that lie one standard deviation of the mean? Negative 46.69 lies one standard deviation below the mean. 1,039.221 lies one standard deviation above the mean. So it's, it's not that bad. I think this is three different uh, slides in your actual project template, but verify that, you know, go check it out. But you really wanna talk about this stuff, okay? You wanna show understanding, you know, don't just, here's the stuff, here, you know, here's what it is, these are the values and that's it. Do not, also don't give, don't give the questions. Don't type, are these values close together or not? And then write your answer. This is a project. You know what I'm saying? It's not like a question, it's a project. You're presenting information um, to somebody, to me, to whoever. You're presenting information and you're analyzing a data set and you're talking about it with descriptive statistics and you know, later on you'll see other things. So, so think about it that way. And then take the feedback that you get on your extra credits and change that stuff for your project so you have a nice project for me, okay? Hopefully this helps. Good luck.